What's going on guys? Alex here from TFL Bike, sitting next to Case, and we are finally back here in town and we can cover some news that came across our desk that we just couldn't leave alone because Triumph just came out with two really cool, potentially affordable new motorcycles. Yeah, it's the Scrambler 400X and the Speed 400, and it seems like they're kind of taking on Royal Enfield a little bit with the affordable, uh, but still premium segment. Like Case uh, said, we wanted to cover this, but we've just been so busy and yeah, it took us a couple days to get to it, but we're not just going to let this slip on by. This is pretty big news. So yeah, we, we got to do something with still it. Still big news, especially because this is not only two new bikes for Triumph, but it's a new engine for Triumph. Their new TR series engine, 398 cc single cylinder. It's dual overhead cam, liquid cooled, and it's the same engine in both bikes. These bikes have a lot of similarities, actually. Yeah, power is exactly the same in these two bikes. 39 and a half horsepower at 8,000 RPM. Torque is also identical between the two bikes. 27 foot-pounds at 6,500 RPM. They both have a six-speed transmission. And on both bikes, black powder-coated engine cases. Um, so yeah, same powertrain uh, exactly in both these bikes. Yeah, and from the sound of it, one that you'll have to ring out a little bit to get the power out of, which makes sense. I mean, it's only a 400cc single, but still, I mean, 40 horsepower, 27 pound-feet of torque, you're not going to set a land speed record with it, but for a smaller bike, it should be plenty to get it motivated. And actually, a lot of the headline features on these two bikes come down to the specific components, and digging into the specific components will do that by each bike. So starting with the Speed 400, you get 43 millimeter inverted forks, and you also get a monoshock with a piggyback reservoir. So actually pretty decent suspension. That alone is impressive to me. And yes, they're not gonna be like fully adjustable and you know. Yeah, it's not Olin's. Exactly. It's nothing too but crazy. a 43 millimeter fork, that's a beefy fork. Yeah, and um, inverted. And inverted. So especially on a lightweight bike like this and a small bike, that's, that's a good suspension setup. And then you have a, uh, a mono shock in the rear as well. And the mono shock is adjustable for preload and it does have a piggyback reservoir on it as well. So suspension is super premium. Yeah, and then of course, move into brakes. Uh, this is one area where they probably saved a little bit of money. It's a single 300 millimeter disc in the front, uh, which is perfectly functional. It's obviously not quite as nice as a dual disc, but again, this is also a pretty lightweight bike and a 230 millimeter rear disc, and you do get ABS. Yeah, which is great for a beginner bike like this. A lot of beginners are gonna gravitate towards something like this. I always think you should have ABS as a beginner on the street. Yeah. Um, so yeah, good components all the way around. The single disc doesn't bother me too much. I mean, yeah, a dual yeah. disc is nicer, but... Um, it's not a track bike. It's not, exactly. It's something you're gonna put around on the street on or you know, do some mild dirt roads, fire roads, trails, stuff like that on the, uh, the Scrambler. So yeah, I think it's perfectly fine with what we're getting. Now you do also get switchable traction control, which is another nice rider aid to have. And then the Speed 400 has 17 inch wheels front and rear. And I think one thing that they did really well is the instrumentation. So you have an analog speedometer, but you also have an LCD screen in there. So it's, it's not the crazy full color TFTs that we see on a lot of really premium bikes on the market, but it still seems to be a pretty solid layout. Yeah, and you know, it's not even as premium as like the Scrambler 1200 we had as a long-term bike. That had a really nice looking display on it. Um, but these are classic looking motorcycles and I think there should be an analog needle that moves through and there is. You still get a little screen to show you some tech on the side. It is a basic looking screen like you just said, but uh, yeah, I think the instrumentation matches the bike pretty well. Yeah, and you also have a USB-C charger, which is nice to have. You have LED lighting, also a good feature. The Speed 400 has a 31 inch seat height, which is not bad at all. 3.4 gallon tank, pretty typical. But one thing that both Alex and I like a lot is that it's 375 pounds wet, which is a pretty lightweight bike. That's super light, which is to be expected. It's a single cylinder. It's a narrow bike. It's, you know, it doesn't have a lot of body work or anything going on. Yeah. It's a basic stripped down motorcycle, um, but 375 pounds for any new rider to get on with a 31 inch seat height, that is a very manageable bike. If you can't handle that, there's probably not many bikes you <laughs> yeah. can handle. So yeah, um, but like I keep going back to, this is an entry level beginner friendly motorcycle. Um, hopefully the price reflects that. We'll get to that a little later in the video, but I definitely think the uh, the specs and you know 
the dimensions of it match that for sure. Yeah, and another great thing about these bikes for beginners is that they are really great looking bikes. So these are gonna be more entry level motorcycles, but that doesn't mean that you get substandard build quality. And it's something that Triumph does really well. The fit and finish on all their products tends to be really great. Now, obviously these bikes, we haven't gotten to get up close with them yet and get hands on but typically Triumph doesn't skimp on that aspect, which means these are going to be bikes that you'll want to walk up to interact with. And there's nothing more important when you're getting into riding than having a motorcycle that you're excited to ride and that you will spend time on. Yeah, that's huge. You need to have that excitement yeah. and energy going to spend as much time on the bike as possible. So it needs to look good. And um, these do. And these do. And looking at it, they look like all the other Triumphs we've yeah. tested, which is a good thing. I mean, I'm just, like you said, we haven't looked at it in person, but like looking at the headlight bracket and everything, there's some details on the spike that look like they're on a more premium higher end model. So yeah, I think that's, uh, that's all good stuff. And in terms of the looks, uh, this Speed 400 is available in Carnival Red, Caspian Blue, and Phantom Black, uh, but I'm kind of partial to the blue. I like the red, and yeah. I'm not normally a fan of red bikes. But... Yeah. Yeah, so there you have it. There's pretty much everything you need to know besides the price on the Speed 400. We'll get to the price at the end of the video, but let's uh, switch gears a little bit and move from the sort of classic street bike to the classic Scrambler, Scrambler 400X. So same engine, many of the same components, does have an all different chassis though. So longer wheelbase, longer travel suspension, and uh, you don't get same size wheels. So still 17 inch wheel in the rear, like the Speed 400, but you now get a 19 inch front. Yeah, and so it's nothing too extreme. It's not a 21 inch front wheel. Of course, this is not an adventure bike. It's not gonna be that aggressive of an off-road bike. It's more of a gravel road kind of bike as scramblers tend to be. And again, 43 millimeter inverted forks, monoshock with a piggyback, kind of like on the Speed 400, but one difference here in the suspension is that you get 10 millimeters of extra travel up front and 20 millimeters of extra travel in the rear. Yeah, I mean, obviously you need some more suspension travel to uh, get you on some trails. This is a bike that you're not gonna wanna take on serious trails, but it'd be a, a dirt road runner. It'd do great up at Tumbleweed Ranch. So more suspension travel makes sense. And then you also have a little bit of a different brake setup mildly different. It's pretty much the same, but you have 20 millimeters of extra brake disc diameter up front. Uh, so same setup in the rear, but a little beefier up front. Yeah. And then similar on the tech front to the Speed 400, uh, switchable ABS and traction control, LED lighting. Both these bikes have a ride-by-wire system from Bosch and a torque assist clutch. Again, 3.4 gallon tank, the seat height is higher on the Scrambler though. Yeah, 32.8 inches, and that makes total sense. I mean, this is a Scrambler, something you might want to clear some low rocks and stuff on. You're not yeah. going to do any crazy trails on it, but it makes sense that uh, the seat height's a little taller, and also the riding position's a little different. Just looking from the photos, it looks like you're a little more hunched over, um, a little more sporty on the Speed 400, which makes sense. Um, so yeah, it's just wider bars, more upright, lower pegs, and a higher seat height on the Scrambler 400X. Yeah, and that should be a bit of a consideration, especially for smaller riders, I would say even if you like the style of the Scrambler more, it's worth at least throwing a leg over both just to make sure that you're fine with that two inch taller seat. It's also another 20 pounds heavier. So 395 pounds, still not bad, still a very lightweight bike, but it is heavier than the Speed 400. So it won't be quite as easy to get a leg over as the Speed 400, yeah. I think both these bikes would be super easy to oh, ride. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, not going to be difficult, that's no, for sure. Not at all. Uh, as far as the Scrambler 400X goes, just like the Speed 400, three different colors, but they're all different. You have a matte khaki green with the fusion white stripe, carnival red with a phantom black stripe, or a phantom black with some silver accenting on it. And uh, I don't know about you, but the green is the way to go. Yeah, the green's definitely the way to go with the white stripe. It's a very classic look, very British, obviously green, their racing yeah. color and it fits that bike perfectly. Yeah, we had the matte green tank on the 1200 we had, and that was one of the most gorgeous paint so jobs I've looking. ever seen. It was so, so good, especially with the gold forks and the uh, the brown seat, really pops. So if you're yeah. gonna get one, that's, that's the spec I'd recommend. As far as availability goes, these bikes are available in India now because these motorcycles are actually part of a partnership between Triumph 
and an Indian motorcycle manufacturer, but here in the States, they should be available in Q1 of 2024. And the pricing is yet to be revealed, but we're figuring as an entry-level bike, somewhere around five or six grand is probable. Yeah, I think five or six grand is a safe bet. If they could come in right under five grand, that would be super impressive. Yeah, that would be They'd have something killer here, but I don't know if that's going to be super possible. Um, Pricing for India is out already, but the conversions never work out right, so we're not even going to go into that. But, uh, yeah, let us know, I guess, in the comments what would be the magic price for you where you'd pull the trigger on this bike because – I think if it's a $5,000 bike, a lot of people are going to jump for it. Yeah, absolutely. And I would figure that the Scrambler will probably be just a little bit more yeah, I think than so. the Speed 400. But yeah, it should be similarly priced and should be fairly competitively priced, which is always a great thing to us because cheaper the bike, the better. Yeah. And for a while, you know, you guys have been asking us to do Royal Enfield videos and we made it happen. We did some news videos. You rode one recently, yep. I think. Um, and yeah, the appeal, not all the bikes they make, but the appeal we see with that brand is how affordable they are. And sometimes you wonder like, how are they able to do that <laughs> for yeah. that little <laughs> amount of money? Like this is a really good bike. Um, and for a while, it seemed like they were kind of the only ones taking up that space of classic style, very affordable entry-level bikes. And now we have Triumph, a yeah. major manufacturer, jumping into that same space. So yeah, this looks to be the same kind of offering. So we're very excited to get a leg over one of these motorcycles and see how they ride. Because again, you really can't go wrong with something cheap. Yeah. So the, And plus, we had that, what did we have, the Speed Twin? for? No, we had a Street Twin for a while. And that was an epic bike. I just really like Triumphs, and I don't have enough seat time on them. So hopefully we can get some of these bikes as long-term loaners or go on a press ride or something, get you guys some coverage on them. But anyway, there's everything you need to know. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.